because at that time I was thinking I was perfect. I stopped my dancing career. What is that? <laughs> and I was chopped. <laughs> Hi everyone. I decided that today I should record a video about my history in dance and how I started voguing and how I came to that because you're watching my videos and I don't explain really who, I, who am I, you don't know me and uh, I think it's a good idea. I'm gonna start telling you about my experience as a dancer since I was six years old because when I turned six uh, my parents gave me to dancing in our school and I always knew that I wanted to perform, I always knew that I wanted to compete, to battle, to do things like to be evaluated in some kind of way. I was going to those dancing classes. It was not like a proper base that they usually do for kids. So it was more of improvisation classes and we were creating our own choreos. Of course, also we were dancing what teacher was telling us. And overall, it was a fun experience. Then, like, as I was growing, I was dancing here and there. But at some time, being a teenager, I stopped having any hobbies and then my parents told me hey you should like do what you like um, because I had a lot of free time after school so I found a school like dancing school near my house and I went there it was a teacher who was teaching us for like a year and then she told me that I could transfer to another group however this group was like only adults at that time I think I was like 15 years old and I live in Moscow, so to go to those classes I had to commute one hour or so to those classes, go to the center and that kind of things that I never did before and for me it was like, okay, but I really wanted to dance, I really wanted to challenge myself um, to see that big world of dancing, so I went for it. And uh, it was hip hop, uh, mostly at that time I was doing hip hop and house dancing classes, we were doing a lot of choreos, some bass uh, of those dancing style grooves and steps and that kind of things. We started to perform, but just very little. I wasn't very, like, I always wanted to be on a stage and I felt like that was not enough. And I started going for <clears throat> different um, classes of different people that were brought by, uh, it, there is a dancing company that brings different choreographers for master classes here in Russia, it's called Project 818. So the, I was going to their first classes that they were doing in Moscow. It was, they brought David Moore, Tony Saar, uh, Andre Fuentes, um, and many, many other choreographers, I think it was um, Sanchez with house like I was doing everything possible like every possible class um, I could see I was I was gonna go at the same time the same dancing school I was going to they start they did a professional group uh, to further on add to their um, dancing team so I started going to that group and that was a huge step for me because we were recording ourselves and I was seeing myself on the video and I was getting a lot of criticism of my dance but that's really important for you as a dancer to get a, uh, another opinion of a person who dances so he's like, okay, you need to work on this and that, this and that so you're not like, oh, I'm perfect because at that time I was thinking I was perfect and that was kind of like, not true at all <laughs> <clears throat> I, at that time I started dancing, like, I don't know, for a couple of years I was dancing like five times a week probably for one or three hours a day training this uh, hip hop house and then to my dancing styles I add just funk because it became very popular here in Russia because it was dancing style, style that they use for uh, video clips and that's how it became popular uh, and then when I was around 16 I stopped my dancing career because I moved to UK I didn't dance much I was doing my university entering exams I didn't have time for that 
However, when I was 18, I came back to Russia and I started dancing again. I went to the same dancing school I used to go and I realized that I grew so much personally and that I didn't like it anymore. And one of my friends told me that there is a girl that is opening a just funk group. Um, her name was Lika Stich and uh, that she was a really cool dancer. I saw her what she was doing on TV because she was a choreographer for one big project here in Russia. And I was like, okay, yeah, she looks like a professional. So I want to go and um, see what she has to teach us. And on the first class, she was given Vogue. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> she was giving us hands of Femme Vogue and different things like this. And I was completely like, what is going on? And she was saying that this group was just Funk and Vogue and in the end it turned out as a Vogue group. We were doing some only Vogue. We were doing a lot of runway and a lot of her choreos that were not exactly only Vogue. They were like a mix of whatever. A couple of months after, uh, there was a ball in Moscow, a Vogue ball. And um, she told us that we should go and participate in it. So. I prepared the costume, I did the makeup, I was so nervous for my first ball and I was chopped <laughs> because um, I don't really know why but uh, I don't have videos to see what I did wrong at that moment but I think at that moment that girl didn't teach us entirely good like proper things but I thought to myself that probably I am doing something wrong and I need to learn like to, to go through the tents and battles and win. So I'm she stopped giving the classes and I stopped going like a couple of months. And I go, I find another teacher and I go to her classes. That was uh, Karina Ninja. Um, I just saw that she has groups. I didn't know like, what is she dancing? I was just like, okay, she's, she's a good dancer. She's a good teacher. And I'm just gonna go and try, and if I don't like it, I will go somewhere else. Let's go, let's go. Die, die. I went to her first runway class and I was like, everything I knew before is wrong <laughs> about runway. Um, and I started um, having a lot of classes with her. We, were, we had um, regular classes and then we had a small group of girls who wanted to evolve in different styles. And we had our personal like small group that was having classes with her. Um, it was like, this is when a huge period of training of Vogue starts for me. I start going for balls and this in this time uh, <clears throat> I, I traveled a lot around Russia with, besides Moscow. I, had, I went to like every ball that was happening in Moscow. I went to St. Petersburg like enormous no amount of times. I've never been so many times to St. Petersburg before. Thank you. 
to Nizhny Novgorod also like I don't know four five balls um, Krasnodar and uh, we also started traveling abroad it was a time when women's performance didn't really exist or I mean it existed but there was no such a like division it was more Vogue femme for everyone in Russia and in Europe there was women's Vogue so we were going there I went to also like so many different balls <laughs> in Europe we traveled to Sweden for Street Star uh, to Baltic session in Estonia. Um, <clears throat> Later, I also, uh, also we've been to the first balls or like in Rotterdam in Netherlands and then to Amsterdam and then we went to Italy, Milan and I went to Paris for the first time for Honeybee Ball. It was the first and last time I went to Paris to ball but this is where I realized how balls are meant to be. It was like amazing support i went i was really scared to walk in paris and i went into baby vogue category because in this ball there was no women's vogue and i made it to finals and for me it was like oh wow 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 <laughs> it was really really cool uh also one of the big balls around like overseas was um a ball in minsk in belarus and this is a poll where when I was invited to a Russian house, House of Zora. And that moment, it was a major house. The thing is that um, at some time in Russia, you could be in two houses at the same time. Um, like you could be in an international house like Ninja, La Beja, um, Ebony, whatever. Um, and at the same time, you could be in a Russian house. So in Russia, you would walk as a Russian house member, and then if you travel overseas, you would walk as a, as a major house from those countries. The problem is that it couldn't exist at the same time because some people were in two houses and some one person could be only in one house that is from overseas, so he would walk uh, from overseas in Russia, from this house in Russia, and then someone who is two is in two houses from Russia and from the house overseas on this particular ball had to pick oh I'm walking as ninja or I'm walking as Sora. So that was not really right. Just as everything Vogue in Russia was evolving, um, I started dancing Vogue like in 2013 and Vogue history in Russia started around 2008. So by when I started dancing, we it's it was the time when we barely started to know what is Vogue, where's the difference between Vogue and backing, because before they used to mix those two styles a lot. So at some point, uh, they realized in Russia that this cannot be true, also because the Kiki scene started evolving, and uh, like the fathers and mothers came together and they said, okay, we have to ch choose either you stay in Russian house and you drop your international house 
or you stay in their national house, you drop the Russian house, or your Russian house has to become Kiki. So, for example, our house, House of Sora, became a Kiki house because our mother, Anik Ninja, is a part of House of Ninja and she didn't want to drop her main house. At the same time, she didn't want to mm, drop us as kids. So she decided to to be uh, to stay both, just that Sora from now on is a Kiki house. <clears throat> because of that, we had a lot of changes in our house, but now we are like a proper Kiki house. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that we became Kiki because they think that Kiki scene is not serious enough. That I don't agree with, but that's another topic. <laughs> this is a moment when I uh, also, thanks to Vogue, I started sewing costumes. I learned how to sew because I saw that in the shops, I would go to a shop and see that something I like either doesn't exist or it's so expensive that you wouldn't be able to buy it. So I had to learn how to sew. And all this time, a lot of people were asking me, where do you get your costumes? How you do them? And I'm always like, well, I sew them myself. Um, and at the same time, like um, around four years after I started dancing Vogue, I started teaching. Um, I kind of stopped traveling that much um, and I start sharing the knowledge I have. I go through the courses uh, for teachers, how to teach Vogue and different dancing styles. I start teaching in different dancing studios around Moscow. I give the personal classes and at some point I realized that I cannot do it anymore. <laughs> um, I didn't know where's the future for me as a dancer but uh, I decided to buy tickets to Mexico and there starts completely another story because I almost stopped going on the balls the only balls I go to are now our balls in Mexico and so far I have participated in only two of them to Mexico um, I, uh, I was meant to go back like in two weeks but uh, my flight got cancelled and I had to buy another ticket so I, I was kind of desperate and sad and I contacted uh, a new ninja that lives in Mexico. <sighs> it was the only person I found that was doing classes and I was like, hey, do you have any events in Mexico? Maybe I could participate in. And she was like, oh, well, we don't have anything now, but I have a great idea. Do you want to come to Mexico City and give a class? And I was like, well, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> so it was my last day in Mexico and she brought me to Mexico City. To give like three classes I think or two no I think it was two classes it was a great experience for me to teach in English to people who English is not their person this isn't their first language but it was really interesting so I got a lot of support from the community there at that moment and I went to back to Russia because I was doing a great project in Russia that I wish I could repeat one day it was called the Adiva and uh, it was a project with uh, like 10 different Vogue teachers who live in Moscow for dancers who only start their Vogue, their Vogue path. It was classes just about Vogue, Vogue history, style, makeup, everything. Like it was two months introduction into how to become a diva basically. Um, but uh, after the project was over, um, the next day I went back to Mexico because I fell in love. <laughs> and it's a completely different story. I was just mostly this... Um, since it was 2017 when that happened, when I went back to Mexico. And um, I was just mostly traveling and experiencing life. I didn't participate them in that many balls as I said I just participated in two balls in Mexico I think uh, when both of them were in Mexico City it was a great experience um, but Mexican Vogue scene has a lot to learn because well they know themselves <laughs> I uh, my main cate cat categories are runway and uh, Vogue femme or women's performance and um, 
in the last bowl I won the women's performance in Mexico and uh, before that I was in final Vogue Femme and in final Runway. During this time, like those two years of my life in Mexico, I gave classes a couple of times in Monterrey, in Mexico City uh, various times, and in Guadalajara and in Merida. I really like giving classes. Like, I like when people take the information. That's one of the things I like doing the most. <sighs> and uh, now my future plans are i'm thinking of doing an online course because i realized that there are so many dancers that cannot get the proper information and they don't have the teachers right ne next to them and they would like to learn but they don't have someone to do that from so i want to do a big online course of vogue which would include runway vogue history um <clears throat> Vogue Femme, Old Way and New Way because all of those dancing styles I was learning at some point I know the basics of New Way and Old Way and I can um, guide people through those um, through the learning process also of course I give online uh, classes uh, of Vogue uh, but mostly not for the beginners for those who at least know some basics um also i'm thinking of doing a course in mexico city like something similar to what i did in um in moscow uh like a big course maybe only with me or with couple of uh in like couple of teachers that i will invite uh but like a whole course because right now what i see is that people learn only something like only one style like they're like oh i like vogue fam so they don't even touch new way or old way or runway and uh i find that a little bit wrong because vogue was evolving and now the vogue fam is the popular one but other styles are cool too and you need to know the history to dance properly what is going on now and then lastly probably i'm thinking of doing uh, classes in in the city where I live in San Cristobal de las Casas but I'm still not sure about that <laughs> because it's a very small town I'm thinking of doing occasional classes but um, I don't know how much people are interested in the kind of events there but uh, I will definitely see I hope you like this video uh, I will keep coming the uh, the videos about how to dance Vogue please don't forget to follow like and comment if you like this video if you what else you want to see on my channel what you're missing which elements you don't understand write me down there um, and we'll figure out what we can do about it love you